Welcome back, everyone, once again. Um, I hope you enjoyed the refreshments and I hope the judges have had sufficient time for their own debate and to reach their conclusion. Um, could I now ask the presiding judge, Stephen Doherty, to offer the adjudication speech, please? Stephen, 10 minutes maximum. Deputy Presiding Officer, uh, Madam President, uh, uh, Mr Pass President, uh, fellow judges, debaters, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, old man Tom Cobley and, his, uh, and, and various others. Um, there is actually a precedent order for speaking in a building of this uh, nature, particularly speaking at this particular place where, um, of course, Her Majesty the Queen um, has stood. So it's a unique and singular honour for me to be uh, uh, standing in, the, that, in, a, in such a hallowed spot. Um, this competition is named after uh, Donald Dewar, who of course regrettably never got the chance to speak in this chamber that he inspired. Um, he was uh, one of Scotland's greatest debaters um, and more responsible than many people for our Scottish Parliament from being, uh, being established. One of his great driving uh, desires was a desire to see everyone succeed in Scotland, especially the young. Uh, and so it's particularly fitting that the Law Society has um, honoured Donald Dewar with uh, the naming of this competition, um, in, his, uh, with this competition in, his, in his name, um, because it does bring together uh, the very best of uh, the, the Scottish school's debaters. And we've seen plenty of evidence of that here tonight. Um, we have had uh, a series of very good speeches uh, tonight, and I'd just like to speak very briefly about um, some of the things that we thought as uh, judges um, tends to go towards making um, a very good uh, uh, team performance, for that is the game that we're in. Um, one of the most important things, of course, is to ensure that you have the right mix of people in your, your team. Sometimes that's different clashes of styles, sometimes it's uh, people who play well off each other, but, but it's important to have the right mix, which means you have to have two strong speakers. Those speakers then need to use all three of the speeches in the debate very, very well. Um, oftentimes what you get is uh, people forget to rely upon the reply speeches, which can sometimes be a very good way of summarising uh, where the debate has gone and where it's, uh, where it's ended up uh, and making the points that you want to specifically rely upon. Uh, we feel the proposition teams, um, particularly in this motion, were given a very difficult job to do um, because this is a hard motion to define. I think it's fair to say it could have been defined in a, very, in, in a number of different ways. Um, I think there could have been questions about who actually benefits um, from uh, the, the existing coverage arrangements um, where the, the coverage is so wide-ranging and, 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 and gives us so much detail. Um, we, we, could ex we could have explored what actually the word restrict means um, in the motion because there are different layers and levels of restriction. Um, uh, there are those who would um, say, for example, that we are already restricted in the coverage that we, that we have. So I think the, the best proposition teams find a way of defining the motion that make, in a way that makes sense and, and takes control of the debate. The best opposition teams, of course, anticipate what that argument might end up being and prepare their own uh, strong arguments in rebuttal. We do need to see from a good winning team um, use of strong, powerful, factual examples, uh, and we need to see them used well and in context rather than just uh, thrown out there. And the use of good examples, of course, moves us away from the realm of making uh, outright assertion um, where there's very little evidence to back you up. So um, the, the, the winning team tonight uh, managed to uh, provide plenty of, of, of good examples for their speeches. It's important to remember, notwithstanding the subject matter of this uh, motion, that humour is a possibility. Um, we saw it from, from some of the floor speeches, of course. Um, humour is important because it helps engage the audience. And if you can find a way of putting across a strong point in an amusing way, then, of course, it's all the, all the more powerful. And the final point that we would like to, to, to mention is the importance in any debate of, frankly, going in for the kill. If your opposing side is floundering and uh, has left themselves open to attack, then your job 
uh, on the other side is to frankly go after the blood in the water. If they're flailing, if they're flailing around uh, in the water, they're just inviting attack. So it is about debate. It is about argument. It's not about accepting what the other side have said. Um, it's about going for the kill where you possibly can. And the best teams do all of those things. The winner of tonight's debate managed to do most of these things, um, which is why they are the, why they are the winners. Um, I'm not, I'm not, I thought I was being timed, Deputy Presiding Officer, but uh, uh, what I will do is... I will is... let you know if you run over. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we do have three prizes to give away um, this evening. Um, first and by no means uh, least, I have to say to you, um, we are specifically enjoined to ensure that you stay in your seats. This is not the price is right. You do not run down to the front when your name is called. Uh, and so with that in mind, um, I'm delighted to announce that the winner of the floor prize, um, which is a £50 book token, uh, for those of you who still read books, um, a £50 book token goes to uh, Craig McCulloch of Lanark Grammar. Uh, so much for the appetizer. Um, the second placed team, and I have to say, um, the time that we used in our judging room uh, was uh, uh, actively used in terms of trying to divide between all four teams who all did very well, but the, 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 there were two that emerged uh, close to the top, and it was a difficult job to separate um, them out as well. Um, but the team in second place um, who receive a prize uh, sponsored, on, I understand, by the Glasgow Bar Association, um, is uh, the two Davids from Presswick Academy. <laughs> Excellent job to them uh, both. Our winners this evening, I'm delighted to say, um, are uh, Jamie and Ewan from Madras College. All that remains, of course, Deputy Presiding Officer, on behalf of uh, myself and my fellow judges uh, and all present is to thank the Parliament for their hospitality this evening uh, and to wish you all good evening. Thank you very much. Thank you very much and congratulations. Can I now ask Christine McClintock, President of the Law Society of Sorry, no, sorry. Wrong page. I've now made a mistake. I was doing so well. Back to the right page. So, thank you very much, Stephen. And we will now hear from Lorna Jack, the Chief Executive of the Law Society of Scotland, who's going to deliver the vote of thanks. Five minutes, please, Lorna. It's been a long day. <laughs> thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, ladies and gentlemen, judges and competitors. I'm delighted once again to be here to witness the fascinating and entertaining final of the Donald Dewar debating tournament. The past 12 months have been exceptional for us all. It has certainly been a year that has encouraged people of all ages to debate important issues, which has resulted in significant changes to the face of politics and citizenship throughout Scotland. With the referendum in 2014 and the recent UK general election, young people have been encouraged to add their voices to the important discussions of their future. It's wonderful, therefore, to be able to host the final in the debating chamber of the Scottish Parliament once again. On behalf of the Law Society and all of our guests this evening, I'd like to thank the Deputy Presiding Officer, Elaine Smith, MSP, and everyone in the parliamentary events and education teams, particularly David Hershaw, Vicky Little and Mary Hershaw, for ensuring tonight has been such a resounding success. Thank you. I think it's worth reminding you just how far the competitors have achieved in reaching the final. Last November, 128 teams argued for and against the highly topical motion this House believes the UK should leave the European Union during the 32 opening heats held in schools across Scotland. We might want to dust off the for and against there in the next few months. 
64 teams from the opening rounds went on to debate this House would abolish all immigration controls in round two. Then just 16 teams went on to compete in the semi-finals in March. The semi-finals are always a true test of skill and resourcefulness, as the motions are only revealed one hour prior to the debate, and our competitors have no access to any external resources, such as books, computers, or indeed smartphones. Reaching the final is a tremendous achievement, and I am sure you will agree that the four teams here this evening are more than deserving of their place in this final. Speaking in the Chamber is a very special experience for our debaters and contributors from the floor and one I am sure they will remember for a long time to come. It may be the case that we see some of you back here as competitors again, perhaps next year or the year after, or even as a future member of the Scottish Parliament, who knows. Attending my seventh debate final, I can tell you that the contributions from the floor become increasingly spirited and entertaining each year. I will lie awake tonight worrying about the BBC becoming a 24-hour terror channel. <laughs> well done to you all who took part in the floor debate this evening, and in particular to our prize winner, Craig McCulloch. Perhaps we will see you in front of the future, a future judging panel before long. And as been, has been said already, sitting in the gallery are the supporters whose backing is immense, the teachers and parents of our debaters, the coaches who have challenged and supported the teams here this evening. It's your support and hard work that has encouraged these people's success. I'm sure you are very proud of them tonight. Also in the gallery are some of our esteemed judges from earlier heats and the semi-finals. Every year we rely on volunteers to make the tournament a success and this year more than 100 of you gave of your evenings, sometimes having to travel some distance in you know, the usual horrible Scottish weather to judge in the opening rounds. Thank you for your support, your constructive feedback to, to the teams, which ensures that many schools enter our, our tournament year after year. Quite simply, without your involvement, there would be no tournament. We do hope you've enjoyed the experience and perhaps you're all ready to join us again next year. It's with great pleasure that I can now turn my attention to the judging panel tonight. I certainly did not envy their difficult task of selecting our winners from the very talented group of finalists that we had before us. Once the event is drawn to a cl close, I'd like to present you with a token of our appreciation for the fantastic job you've done here this evening. Thank you again. And this year again, we're delighted that the tournament is sponsored by publishers Hodder Gibson. We're most grateful also to the Glasgow Bar Association for donating the second prize. And it's my pleasure to welcome John Mitchell from Hodder Gibson and Lindsay McPhee from the Glasgow Bar Association, who will present the prizes alongside the Society's president, Christine McClintock. Thank you for your continued support, which each year helps ensure that pupils across Scotland have the opportunity to compete in this tournament. I would also like to thank my colleagues, Heather McKendrick, Katie Cameron and Laura Gulliver. They work throughout the year to coordinate our judges, schools, teachers and sponsors to ensure the tournament can run to schedule. The final must be for them a fitting end to all that month's hard work and I'm sure they will join the coaches and teams in looking forward to 2015-2016 after they have their summer break. So finally, I'll turn my attention to our winners. Prestwick Academy in terms of the runners-up and, of course, Madras College. The standard of the debate tonight was exceptionally high from all our finalists, and I congratulate uh, Madras on being crowned champions this year. You should feel very proud. Indeed, all of our finalists should be congratulated on their performances. So I'm sure you're keen to be reunited with your coaches, parents and friends, so I'll now hand back over to the Deputy Presiding Officer to invite you up to receive your prizes. Huge congratulations, and I hope to see many of you here again next year. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lorna, and of course, another thanks again to all the judges for their time uh, this evening. Thank you very much. We now move to the presentation of the prizes and I'm delighted to announce that all of the finalists will receive a commemorative quake for their efforts as well as a book token. The winner of the best floor speech is going to receive a £50 book token. 
The runners-up and the winning team will share £500 worth of books from the educational range supplied by Hodder Gibson. The runners-up will receive the second prize of £250 towards their debating society, courtesy of the Glasgow Bar Association, and the winning school will receive £1,000 towards their debating society and, of course, the all-important trophy, which is theirs for one year only. <laughs> so, could I now ask, this is a rerun of what I said earlier, could I now ask Christine McClintock, President of the Law Society of Scotland, and Lindsay McPhee from the Glasgow Bar Association, who have donated the second prize, and John Mitchell of Hodder Gibson Publishers, sponsors of the tournament, to come to the floor of the chamber for the prize giving, please. Could I ask Christine to stand beside the prize table with Lindsay beside her, followed by John. And I am now going to ask Craig McCulloch, Lanark Grammar, winner of the best floor speech, to come forward and receive your prize, please. So, before I ask the runners-up and winners to come forward, I am now going to ask the other two finalists, St Mary's Music School and Lanark Grammar, to come forward and receive your well-earned prizes, please. Well done to both teams. Could the runners-up Presswick Academy please come forward now and receive their prizes? Well done. And last but far from least, can I now ask Madras College to step forward and receive your prize, please, as winners of the 2014-15 Donald Dewar Memorial Debating Tournament. Thank you very much and very well done. Thank you. 
You should all be extremely proud of your contributions this evening and of reaching this final, which is a, a fantastic achievement. Could I ask those who will be staying uh, for the big official photograph, please, to remain in the chamber. You know who you are. And undoubtedly, this has been an absolutely brilliant debate this evening and hopefully enjoyable for all, certainly enjoyable for me. I want to take the opportunity to thank everyone for, for your participation this evening. Good night and a safe journey home, please. Thank you.